Hello everybody, uh, this is the third part of the main plane part uh, tutorial series. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about the uh, tail section of your airplane. Uh, the most important part is this blend right here. Uh, it, it seems a little bit deceiving that you only really need to be concerned with your blend uh, as your main component back here. Um, but it's pretty complicated to get just right. Uh, you can make some very good approximations uh, with a pretty easy blend, but the main way you're going to do this is with care and uh, a little bit of research. So the first thing uh, you want to pay attention to when you're making your uh, tail is well, where do you start from? Uh, some airplanes like the Boeing 737 uh, it starts pretty much at the end of the wings so up here you start seeing some curvature and that's about where you'd want to start putting uh, your blend uh, for this little model demonstrator I just started at a random point back here that looked about right so a couple things uh, that you need to work with um, is getting your initial shape here and you may be thinking, oh, that's pretty easy. I just take um, the shape right here from the extrude. You don't want to do that. Um, I'll show you an example of why you don't want to do that later on. Uh, but what you want to do is when you're sketching this out, so let's go look at this. Tail from back here. Nope, bottom tail, right there. So when you go to sketch that out, you're going to be looking at your airplane from the back or from the front. What you want to do is you want to look off to the side and you see this front sketch right here. This is actually the shape of the entire uh, fuselage section here and that's what you're going to want to grab. Uh, with this, by referencing this up here with the use tool, selecting that with the use tool and referencing it, what it allows you to do is come back and put a round uh, on the interface between the fuselage straight part and your tail piece back here. Uh, a quick example of that is from my Boeing 777. Uh, right here, you can see I have a very, very, very big revolve, uh, big blend uh, in the back here, starting from about right here. And what that needed in order to work out right is a uh, round right here. And if I just put the uh, round in while referencing this extrude for my initial place what happens is that initial sketch it's erased and it you run into a continuity error because you are referencing something that is no longer the same shape so pro engineer doesn't like that that's why you want to reference this sketch up here so going back to our little demonstrator here that's the real critical part for this first sketch. Uh, the next ones are, depending on how what your order, what order you go in, uh, can be easy or difficult. Uh, what I'd recommend doing is going straight to your last section here and doing that first for your uh, first uh, sketch here. And what that does is that gives you a starting point and a ending point. And the only intermediate point that I have right here. Uh, is the most critical part. What this right here uh, controls is your thickness, whether you have a very curved outside edge here or if you have a very straight outside edge. Now if we go back to my Boeing model, you'll notice back here is fairly straight. All right, and that was done on purpose. I went back uh, earlier this year and completely redid the engines and the tail here from what I originally had done and you can see my original model uh, on some videos uh, it's about halfway through a couple videos and uh, elsewhere so when I went back and I saw that I was kinda puzzled about how I do that and so what you have to do is go, uh, pay special attention to the intermediate uh, sketches in your tail blend what that blend also does, uh, what this, sorry, what this sketch also does is it controls how steep this curve right here is. Um, if you go back again to my original 
model of the 777 uh, I have a very round um, base here and that is not what you want uh, if you look at every single Boeing jet out there or Airbus jet you have a very flat section here from basically the rear wheelbase back and that's because when you're taking off you got to be pivoting around that wheelbase and bringing your nose up off the ground and if you have a big round back here it limits how high you can raise your nose off the ground a typical angle right here is about 12 degrees from where you're pivoting around which is your wheelbase which would be about right here right underneath the wing back so you want to have from 12 degrees down completely free so that requires a fairly straight bottom there and you also want a fairly straight top too uh, you'll notice that most uh, planes in the back um, it's fairly straight on top there's not too much round so you want to pay attention to whatever you're modeling or if you're just free modeling you want to pay attention to this middle sketch here because it's the most important one um, if you look at my Boeing 777 model and I'll activate this and unhide this so you can see I actually have two sketches here uh, to give myself a little bit more control over this um, which I really needed when I was making it so from there it's pretty easy to go about doing uh, your vertical tail surfaces here um, with the rear mounted engines I decided to put a T-tail in, which is fairly common. Um, pretty easy to do. Uh, you'll see a sketch poking out of the back right here. And what I did was I just used one sketch to put both airfoils in for the vertical part here. And you'll notice that there's not too much um, difference between the length of the base and the length of the tip. And what that's because when you make the tail, you need to be able to support the horizontal surface up here uh, so you need this to have a little more structural integrity than if you were just to go with your conventional uh, de uh, design where your uh, tail wings are coming out of the fuselage rather than your vertical fin there and then up here um, again this sketch is fairly straightforward um, what I did was I just made the airfoil the same length as the tip was and that made it very easy to go through uh, pretty straightforward uh, one thing you want to pay attention to uh, is usually the forward slant angle here the sweep angle of your t uh, tail fin is pretty similar uh, if not identical to your uh, sweep angle here um, I didn't do it I didn't pay too much attention to it in this demonstrator but when you actually go ahead and, and look at your airplanes it's one of the common features that you'll eventually start to notice so I hope this was informative and helpful uh, if you have any questions put it into the comments below and like always I'll do my best to answer